endorsed well, by we're at Twin Peaks today in Camelback. Uh, yeah, Rick Coro. Uh, that to change that pretty quickly. So, <laughs> you know, well, Twin, it's a, Peaks, Twin Twin Peaks is the best, and I'm just going by what I heard. It was it wasn't my fault. No, nope, not at all, not at all. We'll have to talk to the suits <laughs> about that, but uh, it's a yeah, good segue. Talk to the suits. It, it's a yeah, good, good good segue. All right. Good so segment. how is the weather in Phoenix? Yeah, it's yeah, 102 yeah. today. Um, yeah. All right. The NCAA. Uh, I saw that they are in some serious negotiations to start allowing schools to display corporate logos on their football fields. Um, it's well, a debate. Got to. Yeah, it's a debate that's yeah. gone back and forth. Why has it been this long for, for this to just start coming up? I mean, why wouldn't that be a natural? Like, they do it in every sport. Why college different? Well, because there was this uh, mysterious mythical line about commercialism, and of course nobody follows it. And that's why for many years you would see the names of alumni benefactors on stadiums as opposed to uh, Papa John's, who was one of the first ones uh, you know, to do it in Louisville, and on and on. And, and now you know, United Airlines has done it for, uh, for uh, L.A. and the Coliseum. And so this is the next logical step. If you're going to require schools to compete, and what does that mean now? It means uh, revenue for the students, and you got to let them generate some additional types of revenue. So this will be one of them. You know, naming will be another at all schools. Uh, the gambling piece will uh, become even more significant, and on and on. How about jersey patches? Is that close? Yeah, it, it's, it's, as, it's as close as... Uh, Probably the NFL first, and then, and then college football maybe a couple of years away. Let me ask you, as somebody that consults for for a lot of businesses, are are you in favor of a company putting a patch on a jersey for five million dollars a year? Is, do you think that is a good way to spend your money, or would you put it, that in the media? It's not. It's not really a good question to ask because there are uh, yes to both answers if it's a highly directed hometown ego spend okay. if they look at the opportunities from television and you're the professional so you would do an analysis of the total impressions and if the impressions are pretty significant and like i'm just making this up sure. because i know parsons if GoDaddy becomes the jersey sponsored arizona state and you know that he's arizona and you know how many uh, hits and and uh, and uh, impressions you've got, then it makes some sense. If uh, if an, if a, a CEO or a marketing director is out playing golf with somebody, and he just wants a good time, and he wants his uh, his patch out there. That's not going to work. But then again, he's not going to be in a position of decision making for very long. Rick, I got I got to imagine that with NIL and all the things that are involved with this, is that these colleges or conferences are looking to make as much money as possible with with the new, I guess, format of a lot of these athletes going after their own money in order to fill their coffers or be able to protect that and, and pay some of these guys coming in. So I would think that they're going to start doing this more and more and more just to help themselves out to keep the athletes probably more than anything. You want to hear something neat that I heard your question. I just don't see it as relevant as my comment right now. Um, <laughs> go ahead. You heard that helicopter go over. Uh, that's Greg Norman's helicopter. So it's a little bit of uh, interesting times here in the tropics. Uh, I don't know where he's going to go. I, maybe it's not even him in it, but I think he may be going to uh, another live event to uh, try to take money away from the PGA Tour. Anyway. That, that wait, 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 wait. You can't just do that. I a mean, little editorial was, there. Was the, how'd you know? Is there a shark <laughs> logo on it? I mean, well, 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 how do you know no, it was his? It, yes. Just, well, it, yes, there's a shark logo on it, but you wouldn't see it a thousand feet up. You would know it because it's distinctive green. Okay, and he flies over my house when he's going to go from his house to Palm Beach Airport to get in a Gulf Stream. So, and uh, and I saw some uh, some long hair emanating from the <laughs> cockpit. So, no, I didn't do that. That I didn't do. Everything else I saw. How's that? That's that's pretty good. Yeah, Rick Coro joining us here from I believe Jupiter, Florida. Um, Greg yeah, Stanky, one of the most powerful people in college sports, of course, SEC commissioner, uh, earlier this week talked about trying to create a national standard 
when it comes to uh, the money being spent. And, of course, the $2.75 billion settlement, the House versus the NCAA and NIL and everything like that. Is he – I know you've interviewed him multiple times. Does he have the the juice to, to, to make this happen? Not before because, you know, the most powerful conference guy in all of the conferences uh, is not in a position alone to dictate to other less powerful conferences how they should uh, butter their bread or spend their money. On the other hand, if you've got a settlement where everybody knows they've got equal pay, pain and there's already an allocation, you know, the NCAA is going to take care of 41% of this expense and the SEC X. So they've already done the heavy lifting on the percent allocations. They really have. And now the question is, how do you implement? And maybe it's not just Sankey, but everybody else saying, you know, as you pay your allocated obligation, there may be an opportunity to institutionalize some other ways to spend kind of like what the NFL did. And it's not that weird, but kind of like the NFL and what they did, you know, in the fifties when they decided how to allocate TV money, which was equal across everybody. And of course you could never do that. Now green Bay couldn't sit at the same table with New York. On the other hand, uh, when, you know, everybody has access to the same pain, that's when you get stuff done. So, Rick, the 12-team playoff on the horizon, a lot of coaches would like to see 14 from the get-go, which got to walk before you run, right? So talk about allocations. How is this going to work in reference to the 12-team playoffs and the conferences that have their teams in the playoffs? Dude. Yeah. The allocation the, – the, the, oh, boy. The, the See, why, don't you, why don't you take uh, your dog to PetSmart, get some training? <laughs> Come on. No, he was, he, he was really upset. Because he just learned that uh, he was about to sponsor something that is not realistic, and you don't have any purview. On. So I, I just, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna quiet him down. What do you think? I'm nuts. Uh, I, I already got, I already got my, my hand stuck. Uh, from another perspective, uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna go inside for a second and answer the 12 team allocation allocation question, which is uh, they're working it out. They have a very specific understanding of how that allocation Two is going to happen. But every playoff guy, Hancock's new successor on, is tinkering with the formula of what do you do with 14 and how do you institutionalize it pretty quick. Now, remember, the, um, the, uh, the old formula had basically three games, two semis and one finals. The new formula is going to have many games, and you're going to add uh, a couple uh, in a couple of years as well. So it's a, it's a very interesting question. Rick, thank you. We know you're uh, you're outside enjoying the beautiful weather there in Florida, watching the helicopters go over your home. So uh, we appreciate you stepping aside. And uh, Duke's still up one nothing in the uh, bottom of the second in the uh, women's college World Series. So things are good. Good. And, and and my Duke says hello. And any resemblance to any other Duke uh, on the air, fat, fictional or real, is just coincidence. He's the sports professor. Thank you, Rick. Rick Horo, follow him online on, on Twitter. At Rick Horo, we always appreciate him taking some time. And Duke for joining us here on Rock and Minuch with Jimmy B. Hey, coming up, another TV season has just wrapped up. Uh, can 